Hello, uh, I am thrilled to be here with you this evening to welcome you to the 2021 John Cooper School Black History Month display. Uh, this is an annual tradition for us and since we have been in this building we have had some amazing displays. The space really lends itself to the kind of environment we want uh, for the month of February while this display is up. Of course this year is different in uh, the same ways that athletics are different and some of our student activities are different and we're not able to have the the uh, presence of uh, a lot of people on campus during the day, uh, but we're gonna do the very next best thing. We're gonna put this as a video and post it at various places on the school website and, uh, and the tiles, and you will get a virtual tour of the, of the display, and I think you'll be impressed. It's, uh, it, diversity is imp and inclusivity are important at John Cooper, and this is a, a, a major piece of the annual efforts that we make in this area. Uh, we think that uh, it is uh, the best one we've had because it is both celebratory, but it is also accurate and, and realistic regarding the history of the black experience in the United States. And we think that both of those things are important for all of our students. We'll have students here from all three divisions with supervision of their teachers. And we hope that you enjoy the virtual version uh, this year uh, under these circumstances. I would be remiss if I didn't uh, say something significant about Jennifer Jackson and Pepita Boone and Natasha Douglas. Uh, they are humble people. They will probably mention uh, their, themselves later in this video, but I will tell you that this is the result of their creative efforts, their passion for the importance of this month, and their willingness to just roll up their sleeves and work, and that's what you see as the final result here. So please do, if you encounter them, thank them as we try to do every year for their wonderful work with this display. Thank you. Black History Month, celebrated in February in the United States and Canada, is an opportunity to honor the history and accomplishments of African American people. This national observance began in 1976 in the United States and Canada, and is also celebrated in certain countries in Europe during the month of October. In 2021, this celebration includes the barrier-breaking inauguration of the United States' first female African and Asian American Vice President Kamala Harris. My name is Jennifer Jackson, and I am pleased to present to you this year's Black History Month exhibit, Virtual Style. While the dynamics of our current environment are different, the parent volunteers, along with the lower school, middle school, and upper school diversity coordinators, wanted to ensure the legacy of the John Cooper Black History Month exhibit continued into its fourth year. This year's exhibit highlights key historical movements in black history that navigate us through critical periods of time that contributed to the shaping of a strong people. Famous figures in black history also adorn the exhibit to remind us of the impact black people have made throughout various areas of history. We continue with pride to learn of black history unique and rich to our own state of Texas. And while historically black colleges and universities may not be known to all, be sure to stay tuned as this exhibit exposes you to some of the educational institutions that have produced many great minds. During this virtual exhibit, you will experience the various sections with some of our students. While there is so much rich history of blacks, this exhibit is only able to cover just a tip of the iceberg, but we are sure it will be informing and insightful. It is with great pleasure that I have had the opportunity to work with some amazing Cooper mothers to plan, create, and implement this exhibit. Those mothers are Pepita Boone, who has two children at Cooper, one in the lower school and one in the upper school. Natasha Douglas, who has three daughters in the lower school here at Cooper. My three children attend Cooper and two are in the lower school and one is in the middle school. 
Each of us have worked tirelessly along with the help of some fabulous diversity coordinators, Mr. Samir Muheath, Lower School, Ms. Marsha Elliott, Middle School, Mrs. Ashley Bryson, and Mr. Stephen Abair, Upper School, to execute this vision. I, along with them, invite you to relax right where you are, to learn, experience, and enjoy as we present to you this virtual Black History Month exhibit. A turbulent era following the Civil War, Reconstruction was the effort to reintegrate Southern states from the Confederacy and four million newly freed people back into the United States. During Radical Reconstruction, which began with the passage of the Reconstruction Act of 1867, newly enfranchised black people gained a voice in government for the first time in American history, winning election to the southern state legislatures and even to the U.S. Congress. The Three-Fifths Compromise was a compromise reached among state delegates during the 1787 United States Constitutional Convention. This compromise counted three-fifths of each state's slave population toward that state's total population for the purpose of apportioning the House of Representatives. The 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution ratified in 1865 in the aftermath of the Civil War abolished slavery in the United States. The 14th Amendment was one of the three amendments passed during the Reconstruction era to abolish slavery and establish civil and legal rights for the black Americans. It would become the basis for many landmark Supreme Court decisions over the years. The black codes were created to restrict the freedom of ex-slaves in the South and ensure their availability as a cheap labor force after slavery was abolished during the Civil War. Named after a black minstrel show character, the laws, which existed for about a hundred years after the Civil War until 1968, were meant to marginalize African Americans by denying them the right to vote, hold jobs, get an education, or other opportunities. Executive Order 9981, signed on July 26, 1948, prohibited discrimination against military personnel because of race, color, religion, or national origin. In 1906, a wealthy African-American landowner named O.W. Gurley moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma and bought 40 acres of land that he opted to only sell to black settlers. The Greenwood District, later named, had thrived as the epicenter of African-American business and culture, particularly on bustling Greenwood Avenue commonly known as Black Wall Street. The Camp Logan mutiny occurred on August 23, 1917. It was a mutiny and riot by 156 soldiers of the 3rd Battalion of the All-Black 24th United States Infantry Regiment. The East St. Louis riots were a series of outbreaks of labor and race-related violence by white Americans who murdered between 40 and 250 African Americans in late May and early July 1917. The Red Summer of 1919 marked the culmination of steadily growing tensions surrounding the Great Migration of African Americans from the rural South to the cities of the North that took place during World War I. The Black Wall Street Massacre happened in 1921 and was one of the worst race riots in the history of the United States, where more than 35 square blocks of a predominantly black neighborhood were destroyed in two days of rioting, leaving between 150 and 300 people dead. Separate but equal, yes or no, Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka was a landmark 1954 Supreme Court case in which the justices ruled unanimously that racial segregation of children in public schools was unconstitutional. Thurgood Marshall, the head of the NAACP Legal, Defense, and Educational Fund, served as chief attorney for the plaintiffs. Thirteen years later, President Lyndon B. Johnson would appoint Marshall as the first black Supreme Court justice. Brown versus Board of Education started off as five cases. At first, the justices were divided on how to rule on school segregation, with Chief Justice Fred M. Vinson holding the opinion that the Plessy verdict should stand, but ultimately it was a unanimous decision. The Montgomery bus boycott was a civil rights protest during which African Americans refused to ride city buses in Montgomery, Alabama from December 5, 1955 to December 20, 1956 to protest segregated seating. The boycott is regarded as the first large-scale U.S. demonstrated against segregation. The Little Rock Nine was a group of nine black students who enrolled at a formerly all-white Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas in September 1957. Their attendance at the school was a test of Brown versus Board of Education, a landmark 1954 Supreme Court ruling that declared segregation in public schools unconstitutional. 
On September 9, 1957, President Eisenhower signed the Civil Rights Act of 1957 into law. The first major civil rights legislation since Reconstruction, it allowed federal prosecution of anyone who tried to prevent someone from voting. It was also created a commission to investigate voter fraud. Freedom Riders were groups of white and African American civil rights activists who participated in Freedom Rides. Bus trips through the American South in 1961 to protest segregated bus terminals. The Greensboro sit-in was a civil rights protest that started in 1960 when young African American students staged a sit-in at a segregated Woolworths lunch counter in Greensboro, North Carolina and refused to leave after being denied service. These actions made an immediate and lasting impact, forcing Woolworths and other establishments to change their segregationist policies. Houston's first sit-in was a nonviolent direct action protest led by more than a dozen Texas Southern University students and was held on March 4, 1960 at the Wine Gardens grocery store lunch counter. The sit-in was organized to protest Houston's legal segregation laws. In the spring of 1963, activists in Birmingham, Alabama launched one of the most influential campaigns of the civil rights movement known as the Birmingham Campaign. It marked the beginning of a series of lunch counter sit-ins marches on City Hall, and boycotts on downtown merchants to pr protest segregation laws in the city. From May 2nd to May 5th, 1963, thousands of children left their schools in Birmingham, Alabama to march for civil rights during the Birmingham campaign. The purpose of the march was to walk downtown to talk to the mayor about segregation in their city. The crusade ended after intervention from U.S. Department of Justice. The event moved President John F. Kennedy to express support for federal civil rights legislation and the eventual passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The children made a big difference in the history of civil rights in America. The March on Washington was a massive protest march that occurred in August 1963 when some 250,000 people gathered in front of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. The march was also the occasion of Martin Luther King Jr.'s now iconic I Have a Dream speech. Freedom Summer, or the Mississippi Summer Project, was a 1964 voter registration drive aimed at increasing the number of registered black voters in Mississippi. Over 700 mostly white volunteers joined African Americans in Mississippi to fight against voter intimidation and discrimination at the polls. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. Provisions of the Civil Rights Act forbade discrimination on the basis of sex or race in hiring, promoting, and firing. It is the nation's benchmark civil rights legislation and continues to resonate in America. The 1964 Harlem Riot was one of a number of race-based uprisings that took place in multiple cities across the United States during the 1960s. As elsewhere, Harlem Blacks reacted to racial discrimination, segregation, police brutality, and social injustices that dominated their lives. The Watts Riots of 1965 were a series of violent confrontations between Los Angeles police and residents of Watts and other predominantly African American neighborhoods of South Central Los Angeles that began August 11, 1965 and lasted for six days. On March 7, 1965, what became known as Bloody Sunday in Selma, Alabama, a 600-person civil rights demonstration ends in violence when marchers are attacked and beaten by white state troopers and sheriff's deputies. The Edmund Pettus Bridge, now a National Historic Landmark, was the site of the brutal Bloody Sunday beatings of civil rights marchers during the first march for voting rights. The Selma to Montgomery marches were three protest marches held in 1965 along the 54-mile highway from Selma, Alabama to the state capital of Montgomery. The protesters, under the protection of federalized National Guard troops, finally achieved their goal, walking around the clock for three days to reach Montgomery, Alabama on March 21, 1965. The Voting Rights Act of 1965, signed into law by President Lyndon B. Johnson, aimed to overcome legal barriers at the state and local levels that prevented African Americans from exercising their right to vote as guaranteed under the 15th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. A history of institutionalized unemployment, abusive policing, and poor housing was already present in a certain areas of the United States. 
As a result, riots began to flare up across the country, but especially during the summer months. The long hot summer of 1967 refers to the 159 race riots that erupted across the United States in 1967. In June, there were riots in Atlanta, Boston, Cincinnati, Buffalo, and Tampa. In July, there were riots in Birmingham, Chicago, New York City, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, New Britain, Rochester, and Plainfield. Also known as Title VIII of the Civil Rights Act of 1968, it protects individuals and families from discrimination in the sale, rental, financing, or advertising of housing. The Fair Housing Act, as amended in 1988, prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, disability, family status, and national origin. In 1992, Los Angeles riots were a series of riots and civil disturbances that occurred in Los Angeles County in April and May 1992. In July 2013, the movement began with the use of the hashtag Black Lives Matter on social media after the acquittal of George Zimmerman in the shooting death of African-American teen Trayvon Martin 17 months earlier in February 2012. The movement became nationally recognized for street demonstrations following the 2014 deaths of two African Americans, that of Michael Brown, resulting in protests and unrest in Ferguson, Missouri, a city near St. Louis, and Eric Garner in New York City. The originators of the hashtag and call to action, Alicia Garza, Patrice Colors, and Opal Tometi, expanded their project into a national network of over 30 local chapters between 2014 and 2016. Unarmed, Robbie Tolan was shot in his own yard in Bel Air, Texas on December 31, 2008 by 10-year Bel Air police veteran Jeffrey Cotton. On May 11, 2010, a jury reached a verdict of not guilty and Cotton was acquitted. Tolan's professional baseball career was terminated and the bullet is still lodged in his body to this day. Blacks in America have made their mark in many areas of society. Some of those categories that the exhibit displays are civil rights, sports, arts, literature, politics, and business. In each of those categories, Blacks have made many first weeks remain in a part of our vibrant and meaningful history of contributions to the world. While many are displayed, many are not, so I encourage you to continue learning of famous figures in Black history. The first person of African heritage to arrive in Texas dates back to 1528. African American Texans have created culture and community despite the challenges and have improved in the state of Texas with viable cultural and historical contributions. 
Texas is home to several historical black landmarks and has produced many famous Texans. Most notable, Galveston, Texas is the location where the news was delivered that the Civil War had ended and the enslaved were now free. Historically, black colleges and universities otherwise known as HBCUs have played a critical role in ensuring that African Americans like myself received a quality education dating as far back as 1891. During the years of strict and legal racial segregation in the United States, HBCUs serve as an island of hope where blacks could learn to read and write without the fear of being retaliated against. There are currently 107 HBCUs in this country spanning across much of the Southern states. I am proud to say I am an alum of Southern University A&M located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. My experiences there did more than give me exposure to my heritage. It allowed me to identify my likes, dislikes, strengths, and weaknesses and shape me into the strong black woman I am today. My name is Papita Boone, and I am a proud graduate of Southern University, home of the Human Jukebox and HBCU. Hello, Cooper family. My name is Natasha Douglas, and I would like to take the time to thank the John Cooper School for the opportunity for Jennifer Jackson, Papita Boone, and myself to deliver such powerful content about African American history to our Cooper community. Each of us were overtaken with emotion as we relived history through the countless newspaper articles, documentaries, and pictures of our ancestors. And we as well felt joy in celebrating the progress of the African American culture. We hope that you thoroughly enjoyed this material as we strive to deliver awareness about both the struggles and achievements of African Americans. Visit the Black History Month tile on the Cooper website portal, where you'll find many of the material that our students will be exploring this month. You'll also find this video posted there through the end of February. Thank each and every one of you for taking the time to journey through history with us. We would also like to thank our student readers for navigating us through such rich history. Peyton Boone, who's in the upper school, Bailey Jackson, who's in the middle school, and Nia Douglas, who's in the lower school. This virtual experience has come to an end, and as we conclude, we would just like to say, Happy Black History Month.